Today I'm at an amazing little church. It's All Saints at Santon, which is just across the Suffolk border in the county of Norfolk. And what a bijou church it is. It dates back to the medieval period, but its history is rather sketchy. It's no more bigger than a small chapel. It was rebuilt in the 17th century by the Lordians. And in the 19th century, the chapel was completely rebuilt by the local rector and it's believed to have been influenced by none other than Augustus Welby Pugin. And for those of you that are uninitiated with this man's work, he is the father of Gothic revivalism and it's believed that he was staying at the rectory here as a friend of the rector at the time the chapel was reconstructed using stone from Westhoff's medieval church which is a few miles distant and in fact is now part of an army battle training ground and this medieval stone is incorporated from there inside this church. So it's quite a mismatch of different materials. But when you're inside the church, you can really feel the influence of Pugin's work. Now, whilst Pugin cannot be contributed as the creator or architect of this church, it's strongly suggested that he had an influence. It looks to be a shrine of Gothic revivalism and is also a church which today, sadly, is no longer used for Christian worship. By 1970, the parish had dwindled away, and the church was handed into the care of the local parish council, who maintain this today as a museum which is open to the general public. But what's particularly unique about this church is not so much its historic past, but its spooky past. And for me, joining me today is a man by the name of Eddie Mallet, who represents Whispers in the Dark Paranormal Group. And here he is, the man himself. Eddie, if you like to step here. Hi, Chris. Thank you very much for inviting us down here today. And apparently we've got permission to shoot here at night as well. We have indeed. Which is an absolute bonus. In fact, <laughs> bearing in mind, we're coming up to the Halloween period. Oh, yes. And what is particularly unique about this church, I've been told the EVP here is amazing. They are fantastic. I will tell you that for now. We were here the first uh, night we came here, and we were using an EMF, EMF meter. Yeah. And basically what happened is we were getting in contact with a, with a spirit. One yes, for, one beat for yes, two for no. So anyway, with that we worked out he was a grave digger. But... Our medium, Roger, he said he felt as though there was an influence trying to stop him from getting through to talk uh, talk to us. When we came the second time, yes, <laughs> we were getting some interesting EVPs right the way through. And then I went up into the pulpit and I said, we really love this little church. We think it's really beautiful. Not actually meaning to actually do any singing, but we said, would you like to hear us sing a song? Creepy. Carry on. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I was uh, didn't hear anything on the night. Everybody was totally silent inside the church. Got home, thought so. Oh well, not too much. Quarter past three, playing the actual recording back. Got to the part where I said, uh, would you like us to hear us uh, sing a song? You hear a voice. Hey, you down there. I've seen your arse in communicator. If you disagree with this, you bitch, fuck. I'll scrap you out, old son. I thought Wow, said, that's very strong oh, language sh inside uh, a very small chapel. Yes, indeed. And um, um, have you seen anything in the way of manifestations? Have you seen any, any ghosts in yes. the physical form? Yes, full apparitions. And is that recorded on film, or is it just stuff that you've uh, actually experienced? There's one that is actually on there. There's a small child actually going along by the uh, above the poo to the door. Okay. We've also got on EVPs. A ch small child, as we were come back in, you can hear the small child running on the actual step uh, steps. When they were actually ste stone steps at the time. Well, this piece here is wood. Yes. And, but they was actually pure stone. And you can hear the foot, bare foot steps on the stones as it's running. So you, you've away. got, you, you've actually got the sound of people. You've actually got yeah. a visualization on film, and you've also got the EVP. 
So yep. are we going to expect something incredible today? Can't promise, but... Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it because uh, today I'm actually joined by my friend and teammate, Sean Kim, who's on the camera, but uh, sure. you'll be seeing him a little bit more later this evening. And we're hoping that we have got something really interesting to share, and particularly at this time of the year. And I have to say, this is an absolutely wonderfully secluded part of the Norfolk Stroke Suffolk countryside. It has a great deal of ambience about it. The only drawback which may appear tonight on camera is that we're only about 50 yards from the Norwich to London railway line and the trains come through fairly frequently. But other than that, it is an idyll of solitude and peace. And thank you for joining me. Let's go in the church. Welcome to the first of my informationals for the video. I felt it necessary, having on review, edited and compiled it, that there were certain questions that were raised by the content of the video which needed to be answered in advance. And let's return to that door opening incident. There were three people present. There was Sean Kim on the camera, there was myself obviously, and Eddie Mallet, who you saw in the video made great efforts to ensure that the latch on that door was firmly in place. Now the door itself is constructed from oak, it's a big heavy thing. It has two huge strap work hinges and the latch itself makes a distinct noise as it's very tight to fit into position. And you saw Eddie struggle there to get the whole thing together. How the door was able to open itself without actually hearing the sound of the latch being lifted is a question I can't answer. And another point to bring up is Eddie's reference to the EVP that he recorded during a session one evening when he stood in the pulpit at the church and when the spirit purportedly spoke to him. Now, Eddie has been very kind and sharing that particular clip with you now. So have a listen. I found it fascinating. The only question mark that I have in my mind is that really the vicar? Could that have been somebody else? The voice sounds very crude and very common. I cannot imagine for one moment a priest actually talking like that, but then to be fair, I wasn't around 300 years ago, and the English language has changed considerably over the years, and particularly with accents. But he sounded to be a very gruff and common man. And the language, of course, you can find any of those words that go back to the Doomsday Book. But it was the content of his message which uh, I found truly disturbing, having listened to it. And so you can imagine there was a, shall we say, a degree of trepidation before we actually started the investigation. And uh, I can say that uh, when we returned back into the church, the investigation actually started of all of its own accord, as you will listen to this clip as we were setting up. Sorry for that. Well, that door, I think that unmatched itself. I mean, it's just the way you were talking about what we picked up here. And as soon as you spoke, you said about certain things. I was just, I heard it. I was just heard it. I was listening. I was like, I heard it. It's very tricky. And I went, oh, perfect. It's tricky. And it opens to open. I love this, this, I do love this church. It is beautiful. This is real, this is the uh, 17th century. Yeah, the right, that's the actual build uh, of the uh, church. Uh, uh, Thomas Bankrupt. And that's probably the oldest stone that's here. This part, this 
this, this is the, this is the, the real hub of it. What we're hoping to do now is wander around and see if we can draw any kind of influences from the church before it gets dark and hopefully we'll have something worth sharing with you. But uh, I'm fairly confident and based upon what Sean and Eddie has experienced here so far, I think it's going to be a very interesting investigation. Yes, <laughs> My name is Chris. I'm Eddie. I'm Sean. I thought I just heard someone say something when you were saying that. Where about Sean? Sort of over there. And oh, I, I oh, heard a murmur over that side. Oh, okay. Well, who's off? Huh? Did you not hear that? Yeah. Cough. Yeah. Is that what it works? Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of EVP. Yeah, you heard it then. Yeah. A lot of EVP occurs when you're talking. Yeah. It's almost like it generated, they're, they're using the power of your own body voice, this energy, to be able to, to cultivate and generate the voice. And I can feel that very strongly. Oh, it's a weird feeling here. Yeah, it's very, it wasn't, it wasn't unpleasant in the sense of threatening, it just felt, ugh, you know. Like I could feel someone was ill, that kind of, you know, that kind of negative feeling? Junky feeling. Junky? Junky. Druggy? Junk. Oh, drunk. No, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I would say it just felt like an illness. Just for the camera, when you Sean, Sean's down on the side listening in, so with the headphones, yep. Yeah? When you walked down there and you stopped, two more footsteps was behind you, or in that area. You know, could hear that following on from... Two faint ones was right behind you, you'd already stopped. That's, that's because it whoever it was in there wanted me out of the... Yeah, I was you out. Well, as you can see from that video, the activity started almost immediately as soon as we walked inside the church, with Sean making reference and Eddie, of course, to the door opening on its own. And you'll note from the EVP clip, there was a, she would say, a guffaw of laughter. So whoever perpetrated that deed certainly thought it was great fun. 
Now, during our entire stay inside the church, we never felt anything at all which we could describe as being menacing. So who was the Reverend Kendall? He lived during the time of the English Civil War, and of course the religious power at that time were the Puritans, and the Puritans disdained of alcohol, smoking tobacco, uh, using the services of prostitutes, and of course hanging around inside pubs and bars, which of course he was accused of. He was also accused of bad-mouthing the Puritans themselves. He actually accused them of being hypocrites. And I think that uh, I could probably concur with that line of thought because the Puritans, despite the reputation of dressing plainly and living plainly, were certainly uh, accustomed, should we say, during the forces of the parliamentarians to carrying out the routine rapes and massacres of enemy forces. And so, whilst I could agree with Kendall's views on that point, I could certainly understand why nobody would want him to be a priest if his conduct was like that. And I suppose within the modern context, if any of you remember the series Father Ted, the character of Father Jack certainly fits him quite well. But there isn't very much known about Kendall. He was struck off from being a priest, and when the monarchy was restored, he was allowed to continue as a priest inside that church. And one can just imagine what type of deeds actually took place in there. I mean, certainly if he was a drunkard, and certainly if he hung around with prostitutes, and should we say, uh, people of a lowly class, as they were described at that time in history, I can imagine that there were many parties and drinking orgies inside that church. So there's certainly a stain, and I could certainly feel that during the day, although I have to say, the unpleasantness that I felt was mostly located around the altar and inside the pulpit. But the real interesting activity actually started when we eventually returned at night, as I start off with the introduction from here. I can tell you the atmosphere is completely different in contrast to what we experienced earlier today. When we came in here, it had a, quite a lighter ambience. The, the only time I felt anything nauseous or unpleasant was when I stood in the chancel or actually in the pulpit and it was a, a, a feeling which was also expressed by Sean and also by Eddie. Now Eddie told me there was something unique about this church when you come back into it at night and sure enough when I walked directly into the church a short while ago the overpowering smell of alcohol I could smell alcohol, I can smell it in the air, it's, it's just nauseous, it's, it's in everything. And uh, I believe from Eddie, if we can go over to Eddie, what is the connection with the smell of alcohol here? Because you laughed when I mentioned yeah. that I could smell alcohol, why is that? The rector, uh, Reverend Kendall, who we've been getting quite a bit of here, uh, was known as a blasphemer, a womanizer and a drunkard and very, very often we'll come in here and it was absolutely reek of alcohol. And you've had quite a few experiences with this uh, a person? Lot, a lot, and he has been wonderful. He's gave us so much in the time and that is just amazing. What Can I ask you the obvious question that people would want me to ask you? How do you know it's the Reverend Kendall? Is it just purely upon his history? Uh, basically what happened is uh, we had a medium come to uh, the church and he said um, about the actual uh, reverend and that yeah. and he said I'm picking up on some guy and he's absolutely drunk it's smell of drink it's saying feel it smell it so strong and we looked up and sure enough there it was in the history books and of course now I can feel a presence here which feels quite different from earlier today. I mean, <laughs> earlier today it had a, 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 not an unpleasant ambience, but it was quite heavy, but it was certainly unpleasant in the pulpit and it was unpleasant in the chancel. But I feel this across the whole building now and, yeah, and yeah. I'm absolutely, well, I, I'm, I'm very curious to find out more about this person and of course any other anomalies that have, that have occurred here. Okay, now what we're going to do um, we're just going to sit around. Sean's got the camcorder. I might use the other spare camcorder. And we're just going to 
soak up this ambience and see whether or not any one of these spiritual presences are prepared to come forward and communicate with us. It'd be wonderful if it does. Oh, <laughs> that was good. Just a minute ago, um, the battery on the camcorder has just died. Um, just before that, I'm standing over on the seat here, and I'm, as I move forward, a massive orb just come out of here, past me, and went past Chris. And as soon as that happened, the battery went. So, I'm not, so obviously it must have drained the battery. So it's a good possibility that they're really starting to push. Yeah, I've just seen a white flash in there. <laughs> okay, I'll pass you the camera back. <laughs> That corner of the eye, I've just seen something white flash in there. I'm hearing this noise in the background. Oh, that's what I mean, I don't think they... You hear it? It's not the like a lot of voices. Yeah. And then you said earlier on you heard footsteps. Yeah. Well known. Thanks, mate. Let's have a look and see what we got. I think the first one you might got a little down. I'm not certain if it's in or if you go closer into it. Can you say anything to let us know you're here? Try and say anything that you possibly can. Just have one come from you, zigzag and go straight past. I've just walked to the altar to place this camcorder here, and it was overpowering the smell of alcohol. Really, like as though I was literally standing in the face of a drunk or someone who'd been drinking alcohol. It was that overpowering, and it was roughly here where the camera is here. Wow. Is that one of the other stories? Yeah. Spot This is his favourite little spot in this area. In fact, it's in that corner there where he likes to stand. I'm not standing out. The alcohol smells gone, by the way. Mm -hmm. No, it feels neutral here at the moment. It, it's moved away. But it was, when I just walked up here, it was stronger than when we first walked in. It was, it was really in your face, as though he was standing face to face. Yeah, that's one of the things, if you will, get a lot. Smell of alcohol. But consumed alcohol, not fresh alcohol. Different smell, different smell now. Very heavy sweat to smell, but with a smell of incense, if, you, if that makes any sense. I don't remember how to do it. A sweaty incense, I smell of incense. That's maybe. Oh, again? Yeah, I just got locked. It's not like just is, it's that kind of smell. To me, it's, I think I've got no sense of smell and if they last that in the bones. Uh, if I do smell something that I know, that's, I think I'll get something really nice. So it's got to be a really strong smell for you? Well, you know, that was neutral. The core area of this church at night is definitely inside the chancel by the altar. That appears to be where the strongest pull of energy is, where most of these weird sensations and feelings are picked up. And even standing here, looking into the dark, I can see little flashes of light swirling around inside by the, by the window, by the altar. And weird smells. I, standing here, I can smell, I can still smell it. It's like a smell of incense or joysticks, and, and with a kind of sweaty tang to it. That's the only way I can describe it. Some of these, it, 
it's so strong, I can smell it as though he's standing here with me or somebody is standing here with me. And I'm getting pressure on the back of my head, which sometimes, on the side of my head, which is sometimes an indicator that things are happening around me. And I wish that he would give us a sign, please. Can you give us a sign? Can you give us a sign of your presence, please? A common feature of that church's hauntings is the haunted box pew, which is located inside the front, immediate front row to the right facing the chancel. Now, I, I would have to disagree with people who regard the pew as being haunted if based purely upon the door opening. When I actually examined it, it was simply a brass catch which twisted over and secured the two faces of wood together, that is the door and the framework supporting the box pew. Now, during a number of occasions during the night when Sean was in there, he secured it, but I don't think he secured it properly because it opened literally within seconds of it being secured. And if uh, proof be positive here, I actually physically secured it and ensured that it was firmly held in place because it was easy to twist it in place, but if it wasn't properly attached, it would quite simply slip off and the door would open by the forces of gravity. But certainly inside that box pew, I could certainly sense and feel activity around me. And as you will see, this activity was quite manifest. There were also, during the entire period of our stay inside the church, voices. We could hear people whispering and talking, lots of people whispering and talking in the background, which again is a common feature of hauntings inside that church. I didn't physically see any apparitions, but I'm certain that uh, if I returned on another occasion, I might be lucky in capturing something more solid. But anyway, enjoy this video clip for the rest of the show. You didn't know something about that view, so... It's just here, see if you can pick up. Which one's that? They know why it's haunted. Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, I can't get there. Sorry. At least not many people stay there for very long. That was so strong in there. What yeah. did you feel? I felt as if someone was... I felt as if someone was there. And as I stepped in, come right up to me, and I just felt so much pressure. Well, I can't feel, feel it now. Eddie, you film us. I'll go in with Sean, yeah. the two of us, and see what happens. That's exactly what we've been having. Feeling something in my stomach now. Food. Yeah, I'm getting off of me. 
Who are you? Can you tell me who you are, please? What I'm describing to you, Eddie, at the moment, does that tie with previous experiences? Haven't come across the lady in black, but everything else does. I'm just getting the image of the lady in mourning. Mm -hmm. Getting a cold breeze coming right across me. But I'm not feeling sadness, that's the weird thing. You're not feeling sadness. I've just seen a shadow. Did you see that? No, no, no. Black shadows, right? In the chancel? Yeah, right across the front of it. <laughs> It's the one number one thing you do get here. You'll see loads of them. As soon as I said I felt the cold breeze, then I saw the shadow move away from me. And I feel sad anymore. No, it's moved away. So I've seen it move away. But that, that's other than the fact that my, I felt my breathing was being affected, not substantially. Other than that, I haven't. And the image that I had, I haven't experienced anything else. Where are we sitting? I'll keep hearing a male voice, and it sounds like someone moaning, or perhaps groaning, but I can hear it just very faintly, and I don't hear it all the time, just occasionally. What's that? I look that door and it's open and that makes a noise when that latch comes off. Door's opened? Yeah, it's open. It's a known thing. We have get that a lot. We've gone oh, by so there and the door had just opened by itself. Yeah. There is. Let me just close it and see. Did you hear it? Right, there's the latch. The latch is... It's a little bit on the rough side, but once you get it right... Right, make sure that's locked in, is it? Yeah, right. You got that was... camera ready? Yep. See that? Okay, let's see. If it happens again, then we can, then we definitely have got some. I possibly have got it, because yeah, I wasn't. Okay, let me lock it now. Let me lock it. You've locked it, let me lock it. Yeah, I've got it. Alright, that's firmly locked. Yeah. That should not move now. That opens again, then. Flashes, um, screens. Just seeing, just seeing an orange, little, very faint orange on the wall there, a little flash. Jesus. Yeah, I've got one up no, there. No, I thought there was someone sitting there. Just so I took that, there's, it, there's one up in the rafters. It, it, it it looks just, like it's yeah. small, but sharp. I thought someone turned around, I thought there was someone about three things back sitting there, look watching us. Someone small, not, not a big person, like a woman or a child. I'm a dwarf. No, it wasn't that small. I had him, I've been, I was sitting there and he's come right by me. And it's amazing to see, because uh, literally, although it's black right. shadow, you could actually see all the plaid in the actual uh, gown that he was wearing. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's like that. sackcloth. I'm Eddie. I'm Sean Eddie. I'm Sean if you want to talk. I heard a voice. Could you tell me your name please?
Well, big dark shadow above your head and what looks to be an orb in the middle of it. Who's head? Your head. Oh. Yeah, but it's in the far distance by the window where I said I, I could see yeah. a lot of light around the door frame. None at all. Not like uh, not that I've seen. Usually, I'm more used to actually looking through uh, the other eyepiece. Well, the pew, sorry, the the pew door hasn't opened, so I think if we leave the pew and then lock it and make sure we're both satisfied, it's totally mm -hmm. secure. And if it opens again, well, it's not feeling nothing. Yet. No, it's gone. I'm, I'm just feeling nothing at all. Yeah. Whatever it is, or whoever it is, sorry, is just moving around. Because mm. I couldn't believe that. But it's over by the door at the moment. Yeah. He's still flashing by the window. I saw the head and shoulders sitting there. Oh, yeah. It's the first one I've seen for a long while. That's me now. Somebody walking, not inside, outside. It sounds like gravel. It's what I was just yeah. Oh no. Certainly got a special. Oh, what? massive flashlight down where the stool is in there. It's not. Is it cold in here tonight? Where, where you would blow chill from your breath, so it would appear as steam. Oh. Well, I've just got, an, and let me just show on the video. Have a look at this picture. There's a huge cloud of energy right above me, because he's hovering over me. That's why I can smell him. And it's all misty at the top. You're up there, aren't you? And that's why I can smell you. Let me just do it on the camera to prove. Right. Breath test. A breath test. No, not a thing. Just for the skeptics, just to rule out the fact that A, I'm not standing here with a cigarette, and more importantly, of course, it's not that cold where it could be condensation from my breath and yet I'm feeling all these weird and wonderful things around me, the smell and everything, and he was hovering above me, he was directly above me and, and as I showed in this photograph, he was quite clearly there and as I proved, it's not condensation. So we wonder what next he's going to do. Two of the things that we've had when we've had uh, insults 
that have been put at us. Uh, both times we've heard the saying, hey you down there. Because he's up there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We've been here the best part of an hour and three quarters and we've had three cameras running, which is a day camera which is recording audio and two night shot cameras, one of which has been on the altar during the time that we've been here. I think this place has been fantastic. We've uh, certainly captured some interesting imagery. We've experienced some amazing smells and sensations. And of course, the, the pew, sorry, yes, the pew door, wasn't it, that kept opening? Yeah. That's yeah. something which uh, I find quite curious. I didn't personally experience it, but I was sat next to Sean, and there was certainly a, a, an atmosphere being sat there, and it's a haunted pew. Um, what about for yourself, so. Eddie? How, how's it been for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's been interesting. I'm hoping that I've got that on camera with the door open, with the poo door open. So that'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, I was actually uh, pointing the camera at the time, and I, I didn't actually notice the but notice the pew. I was more looking at Sean with his. So hand. we need to look at that. So it's a good possibility you yeah, will see that. There. Very quickly because we're running out of tape. Sean, smell the smells now. I think I've got put it on the shoulder as well. I felt our finger. But when we were sitting down the hall here to pube it, um, I felt really sad. And Chris said that he felt as if it was a woman morning. And then I felt this really cold breeze come over me. And then I saw a shadow moving away. Then that's when I noticed that the door was open. But just after that, Chris was just about, was just taking a photo in the flash. And as I moved, turned my head to behind us, it was either a, a boy or a woman who was sitting in about three seats back leaning on up against the other chair. That would have been amazing. And she was, she was watching us, but it was mm. a split second. I can't believe I saw her. Okay, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Hope you've enjoyed this investigation. And thank you very much to you, Eddie, You're and welcome. your group. And if you want to look for them in Facebook, what shall you look for? Uh, Whispers in the Dark. Whispers in the Dark on uh, Facebook. Also, Haunted Santa Church. And Haunted Santa Church. Anyway, we've got to finish there because we're totally out of tape. Thank you very much everybody and it's been a great investigation and thank you to you. Okay.